Hello there, everyone. I'm back with another series on Kaggle competition. This time, we're going to work together on an ongoing competition. As you may have known, not very long ago, Kaggle just released a new competition, the M5 forecasting. In the first few videos, I'm going to take you through everything you need to know before getting started, including what we're predicting for, how each data file is formatted, and how we're evaluated. Very exciting stuff, but before we get started, I would really appreciate it if you can drop me a like if this helps you. It will really help this video to get discovered. Okay, now let's get started. The M5 forecasting competition is split into two parts, accuracy and uncertainty. Each is its own competition and you can choose to join either one or both. The accuracy competition asks participants to predict the exact sales number of an item for the next 28 days based off of historical sales data of this item. And the uncertainty competition requires a probabilistic forecast with median and four prediction intervals, 50%, 67%, 95%, and 99%, which just means how certain you are that the point forecast will fall in the range of values. For example, you can be 99% sure that an item will sell between 0 to 20 units tomorrow and 50% sure that it will sell between 8 and 12 units. In this series, we'll be entering the accuracy competition. There are four data files in total, and we'll look at what's inside of each of them later. This competition is very nice in providing us with a guidebook. So let's read this guide together. The objective section tells us that for the accuracy competition, we want to provide the most accurate point forecast for each of the 42,000 historical time series. The competition started on March 2nd and will end on June 30th this year. There will be two phases in this competition, the validation phase and the test phase. Between March 2nd and May 31st, we're currently in the validation phase. In this phase, only part of the training data will be released. So in each time series, the last 28 points will be hidden in this phase. During this time, whenever you submit your predictions to Kaggle, it will evaluate against the labels in this hidden validation set, and that will be the score you see as a feedback. On June 1st, we'll be entering the second phase, where this validation set will be made publicly available. So if you made submissions before June 1st, please make sure to download a new data set and train your model again with the additional 28 days of training samples. During this phase, you will not get a feedback score on the final test set, and results will only be released at the end of the competition. This setup uh, most simulates real life where you only get feedback for predictions on the future once. You won't know what your score on the future before that day comes. Now let's take a look at what are the 42,000 time series we'll be predicting for. This is a breakdown of all the time series. We're not only forecasting how many units we can sell for a product in a specific store, but we're also going to predict for the aggregated series at store level, department level, etc. There's a whole hierarchy that's illustrated here, and we'll look into what each of the series in this hierarchy means. The data is provided by Walmart, involving sales of over 3,000 products from three categories, hobbies, foods, and household. These come from seven product departments, where department is just one layer more of categorization. For example, the foods category can be split into department foods 1, foods 2, and foods 3. Products come from 10 stores located in three states, California, Texas, and Wisconsin. Let's go down this hierarchy level by level. In the top level series, we want to predict for total sales aggregated over all products from all 10 stores. At level 2, we want to forecast for aggregation across states, because stores in California might sell differently from stores in Texas. At level 3, we want to forecast for each individual store. Level 4, individual categories. Level 5, department level. Level 6 is aggregated over state category combinations. For example, what's the aggregated sales amount for products in the foods category in California? Level 7 is aggregated over state's department combinations. For example, what's the aggregated sales amount for products in foods 1 department in California? Level 8 is over all store category combinations. So how many items under this category are going to sell in this store? Level 9 is store department combinations. Similar to store category combinations, 
it's asking how many units out of all the items within this department are going to sell for this store. Level 10 is product level forecast. This is asking what's the total sales of this product aggregated over all places it's sold at, so over all stores or all states. Level 11 is aggregated over product state combinations. For example, what's the total sales of product X in California? Then the bottom level is aggregated over product store combinations, which is basically asking us how many product X are we going to sell in store A. All of these adds up to our 42,000 time series. I'm going to end this video right here, and in the next video, we're going to look at what data is provided to us and how we can use them. Please subscribe and stay tuned.